What's up, everyone? My name is Chris Salamone, and welcome to Fix Your Design, the show where somebody comes to me with a design problem, and I hopefully help them find a solution. On today's episode, we're joined by Joe, who designed this hall table, which, if I'm being honest, isn't a bad start, and that's going to make my job a little harder, but that's okay. I'm still up for the challenge, and I think I can help him take this piece to the next level. So let's give him a call, see what problems he's having, and then we'll come up with some solutions and present them to him. All right, so you designed kind of like a hall table console thing and, and you were having some issues with it? Right. What were the biggest challenges for you? The main issue I was having is the top of the hallway table just feels chunky compared to the, the legs. Okay. Um, I'm hoping to figure out how to balance that out. Looking at your space, it doesn't seem like there's any dimensional restrictions, right? It's like a pretty big area that it's going into. Yeah, I think the wall, like wide was like eight feet so oh wow yeah how did you decide on the overall dimensions i started out just looking at other websites that sold tables and okay they were all a little too small it felt like for that space so mm -hmm. was it more than that in the dimensions that you made it bigger was it more in like height or width kind of all around i kind of just scaled okay it you up. just scaled it up okay all right well i think i have some ideas so i'm gonna work on it and then uh I'll hit you back up in a couple days and, and we'll see what I come up with. Cool. Thanks, man. All right. Talk soon. So something that I always do is design by process of elimination. And what I mean by that is it's really hard, at least for me, to come up with a perfect solution on your first shot. But what I can usually do is look at something and pick at least one thing that feels wrong about it. So what I like to do is just keep eliminating or changing those things that feel wrong until... What I'm left with is what feels right. So looking at Joe's original piece and drawing it here in 2D, it gives me this feeling of a guy with his pants pulled up way too high, like the belly buttons in the rearview mirror over the horizon and we're approaching the nipples now. Or actually, if you've ever seen Disney's Robin Hood, the one where Robin Hood's a cartoon fox, there's a scene where he dresses up like a chicken or a rooster or a crow, some some kind of bird, and he's in disguise so that he can win an archery contest. This piece reminds me of that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is redraw the piece a little bit lower and a little bit longer. And looking at this, it definitely still has that feeling a little bit, but it's less, so I think that this is on the right track. And overall now, the number one problem that I'm seeing is that the piece just visually feels top-heavy. So everything I do from here on is going to work towards the end of reducing visual weight from the top of the piece and adding visual weight to the bottom of the piece. So the first thing that I'm going to do is make a more aggressive taper to the legs. Now you'd think that by removing width here and or adding it here, it would just exacerbate the top heavy problem. But I think that it gives the piece a more kind of sure footed feeling and it just helps with the stance and makes the piece feel more planted, I guess. Next, I'm going to add a lower shelf and I'm going to mimic the apron design that he has going on up top. And between those two things, I think that we've already got a much more visually balanced piece. All right, now let's work on the top in a little more detail. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add an inside chamfer to the case. And I think that this is gonna help the case to feel more cohesive with the rest of the design, which I would say skews more towards the elegant side of things. And I just feel like the original cabinet's a little bit chunky looking. And actually let's talk about the case in more detail. So in Joe's original design, he's got this big gap here to the far ends of the two drawer fronts. And I'm guessing that those act as a way to open the cabinet. Now, typically for the sake of function, unless you have some really slidey drawer slides, you're going to want your drawer pulls much more towards the center of the drawer. Otherwise, things are going to want to bind. But I want to stay true to the original design, so I'm not going to just slap on a handle in the center or anything like that. But I am going to get rid of the gap, and we're going to use these live edge and circular facade pieces as handles instead. So the way that we're going to do that is by adding a back bevel to them so that there's something that your fingers can grab onto in order to pull the drawer open. And I've never done this exactly, but I've done similar drawer pulls. I think a good example was on the built-ins that we made a few years back at my parents' house. 
where we did a rabbit to create a ledge. And I know it's kind of hard to see in this picture, but all that is to say it's similar functionally and it works pretty well. All right, so I'm gonna work on the final design here, but I have one more big design change that I'm gonna sit on for a minute because I want Joe to see the more normal changes first, and then we'll spring the most drastic change on him during the reveal. And I guess while I'm drawing, let's cut back in time and shoot the poo with Joe. How long have you been woodworking? Almost a year now. Okay, so I you're guess. pretty new to it still. Yeah, I mean, I've always kind of like built stuff, but mm -hmm. as far as like, I, I didn't buy my first table saw till Christmas last year. Okay. So, so not even a like, year of like hardcore woodworking. Yeah. I, I said this to you when you first submitted the design for this, that I was like, oh man, like your piece isn't bad. Like, I don't want people to get the wrong idea of this, of that your original starting point was bad. It's actually pretty good. I was worried going in that it wasn't bad enough and that there wouldn't be enough, you know, meat on the bone for me to fix it or whatever. I do want to say that, that so that people don't think that we're just like ripping this thing apart. And actually yeah. like overall, like I'm being nitpicky. So like if I had to say anything, it was kind of that like wearing your pants up to your nipples yeah. kind of <laughs> feeling or whatever that, that it gives me, which like. Yeah, even when I was looking at like examples on like West Elm and other websites, like they all kind of still looked high waisted to me. So I was like, maybe that's just how they are supposed to look and it'll look better once I build it and see it in person. But mm -hmm. yeah. All right, before we get to the reveal, let's take a minute to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So I've been using Squarespace for about four years now and it's been great. Prior to that, I used to code everything by hand, which takes time and can be hard. And if I'm being honest, the outcome wasn't as nice as it is now with the templates that I use with Squarespace. So in addition to Squarespace making it super easy to build and maintain your site, buy domains and all that stuff, they also have plenty of e-commerce, which has been really helpful since we started selling plans. Things like inventory management, a simple and secure checkout process, and unlimited products allows us to easily manage online transactions. So if you're thinking about starting a website, or even if you already have one that you think could be better, you owe it to yourself to check out Squarespace to see if it might be a better option for you. Just head over to squarespace.com slash four eyes for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, use the offer code four eyes to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. All right. Thanks, Squarespace. Now let's call Joe up and show him what we got. All right, Joe, I worked on it a little bit and I... I came up with some ideas. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. That's your original design, essentially. Would you agree to that? Yep. <laughs> okay. That, that definitely feels a lot more balanced. Mine looks like top, look, it's going to tip over, honestly, compared to that. When I first started redesigning, I was going way off the rails. I was basically just as if it was me designing a hall table. And I was thinking about it. That's the challenge is to stay to use all the elements that you used, but just kind of tweak them so that it's still the same hall table, just evolved. So there'll be a 2.0. Yeah, I'm actually, I might be moving in a couple months down to Florida. So this comes uh, with the house yeah. now for the next people? My, yeah, well, no, uh, right now I live with my brother and his girlfriend. I'll leave this one with them and then make the new one when I go set up down there. Thanks for letting yeah, me crash right. here. Here's a unproportioned hall table. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more thing that I did to it that kind of starts going outside of the scope of the piece, but I think it, it adds a lot of interest to me. This is probably what I would do if I was building this piece. Here's that version of it. Okay. I like that. I actually, so when I was researching, I did see something similar to how you, how you just did this. And I was like considering doing that floating. I didn't think about extending the legs all the way up though. That looks really cool. I'm, I'm actually thinking about going and chopping the legs down real quick and adding a <laughs> shelf. <laughs> yeah, so, that's cool. Yeah, these are these are my tweaks to it. I, I hope I stayed true enough to the um, original version, but I think it, it adds some balance to it. Hope you're happy with it. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you like this kind of content do me a favor and help me spread the word. Post about it on social media, tell a friend. Whatever you can do to help put it in front of other people will go a long way in helping me to continue to make this kind of content. And if you love this type of content, consider supporting the show on Patreon. Every little bit really does go a long way in helping me to keep going. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.